Hey guys, this is Grinder here from Androidify and welcome to Android App Development for Beginners number 9. In this video, we're going to talk about implicit intents. In the last video, we talked about explicit intents. If you remember, explicit intents are used when we know the exact component to start by its name. It's used within your app to launch different components. So here in this example, we have two activities. Launcher activity, which appears when the user opens your app for the first time and a receiver activity which appears when the user clicks on the send button. So when the user clicks on the send button in the main activity, we use explicit intent to open the receiver activity by passing the receiver activity class to intent object. When it comes to implicit intents, things are a bit different. So what exactly is an implicit intent? Implicit intents are used to declare an action that needs to be performed without worrying about who will perform that action. Implicit intents do not start a specific component within an app. Instead, they are used to start other apps. You don't know in which app the user will end up in. If there is more than one app that can perform the requested action, then the user will have to pick an app from a list. On the right here, if you search for a location on Google and you click on Maps, then you will be presented with a list of apps that can handle the request. So why do we use implicit intents? Let's look at a scenario. So let's say that you're building an app that needs to be able to take photos. You can either write code to access phone's camera and take a picture, wasting time essentially, or the user can use a pre-existing app. This way you can use the features of other apps without ever having to implement those features in your app. So there are four things that you can attach to intents. Action defines what you want to do. Do you want to send an image or take a picture or place a phone call? Data sets the type of data that you want to send. If you're sending an email, then the data is going to be what you're sending in that email. If you're calling someone, then the data is the phone number of that person. Category is a way to group a bunch of different components that share the same characteristics. For example, there's a category called launcher and all the activities that are shown in your phone's launcher have defined launcher category in their manifest file. And lastly, extras are key value pairs and they are additional information that you may need to provide. It could be a title of an image or a subject of an email. Now, how do you create an implicit intent? First, you create a new intent object with a default constructor. Then you can set the data and the action. And lastly, you call start activity method and pass the intent object to it. So how does Android OS knows which apps can carry out the requested action? Apps that can handle certain actions declare them in their manifest file by using intent filters. Android OS then compares the requested action with the intent filters of other apps. If the request matches an intent filter, Android OS launches the recipient component. If there's more than one app that can handle the request, then the user is presented with a list of apps to choose from. There are three things that apps can state inside the intent filters. Action, data, and category. Now to declare an intent filter for your app, you create an intent filter element inside a component. Like I mentioned previously, you can declare three types of intent filters, action, data, and category. So when other apps need to use certain features of your app, Android OS will present your app to the user. Hopefully you have learned about implicit intents after watching this video. In the next video, we'll go through an example of implicit intents in Android Studio. Until then, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to read the written article over at androidify.com. Feel free to follow me on social media. The links will be in the description. Please subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm Gurinder Singh from Androidify and I'm committed to helping you along the way.